Petro Poroshenko will have a hard time winning back hearts and minds in this city. As the people of Donetsk sweep up the debris of their homes and livelihoods, they are hardened against a president they say is killing his own people. We are Ukrainian, but they kill us, this man says. So we probably need our own country, because these people in Kiev, they are not brothers for us. The shells hit these homes days ago, but the tears are still fresh. We live on the ground. It was so hard for two weeks, especially for 27, 28, 29th. But only today it's quiet. Sorry, sorry, I need to go. Two people were killed outside this block of flats last Wednesday. One of them was a 50-year-old woman, the other a 34-year-old woman. Her husband, who won't talk to us, he says he's in shock, managed to make it down to the cellar with their little child, but she just didn't have the time. And this is a story that repeats itself over and over in dozens of apartment blocks with civilians being killed by the constant shelling around Donetsk. The city's trauma hospital is filled with the civilian wounded, shrapnel embedded in the flesh and bone of market sellers' legs, the broken limbs of pensioners far too old to run. There was one war, and this is the second war, this old lady tells me. I was born in 1940 in World War II, and I will probably die before this war is over. Valentina Popova in the next door ward lost her leg and her arm to indiscriminate artillery shells. Switching to the Ukrainian language, she makes a heart-rending plea to the president. We used to dance, sing, do everything in Ukrainian, she says. Poroshenko, Mr. Poroshenko, please listen to us. Why don't you understand your people? Be a man, be human. Please stop your aggression. Stop this war. But there is little sign of that. This once thriving city is now half empty, its railway station bombed. The forces unleashed by this conflict, greater perhaps than Mr. Poroshenko can control. Now, there is a nightly curfew here in Donetsk, Andrew. We've just heard the rattle of small arms fire, but the last two days have actually been very quiet in terms of uh, artillery shelling, really not much of it at all. Uh, as we were drove it, driving through town, though, earlier on, we saw a school that had been hit. We saw one of the hospitals in town that had been hit by the artillery shells of the last uh, weeks or so. And today, Andrew, is the first day of school for Ukrainian children. And the Ukrainian government, Kiev, says that some 900 schools have not been able to go back today. That's around 10,000 children because of this continued onslaught. And let's not forget, Andrew, also, that this is the situation now on the 1st of September. But this country gets extremely cold in the winter. So Mr. Putin has his fingers on the gas uh, and on whether Ukraine gets that gas or not. And that is really a time when you will see the humanitarian situation deteriorate drastically. Andrew? And still, still no end in sight to the